I mean, I like I like to wait so that that happens in my first key climatic sentence. You know, <laughs> this is the Lee album recording in progress. <laughs> okay, the uh, so I thought this time I remember. <laughs> um, okay, so this unit, which will not be a long one, may uh, finish tonight, but is simply wor uh, working with the notion of. Yes, we are a church that has as one of its uh, objectives, learning to live a life of love, and the recognition that it is something that requires some learning, and that's what Wednesday evenings are about. And specifically, we're looking uh, in this unit at how to shape our minds to love more fully. Discovering everyday rituals, prayers, or contemplative practices that best encourage us in the uh, way of love. And, um, and we've looked at a number of texts that, uh, uh, that relate to that. This evening, um, I'm, gonna, I'm on page two. It list, you'll see a list of scriptures there. Um, a very familiar scripture to us now right now because it's coming up on sunday morning as sort of a keynote um, uh, text but philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11 uh, where paul to the philippians is saying your attitude should be the same as that of christ jesus who being in very nature god did not consider equality with god something to be grasped but made himself nothing or emptied himself taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We spent time with that text um, uh, it's making it serves as a good context for what we're trying to do in the last couple of weeks and this evening second peter chapter one where i think peter's envisioning something exactly like what we're doing um, it's a great text that leads off in a powerful way Second Peter chapter one verse three. Um, catch this text. God's divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given, I'm reading on to verse 11. Uh, through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. That's not Laconia wrong sheet. The, the, uh, um, Okay, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control uh, uh, perseverance and to perseverance godliness. And you can see what he's doing here. And to godliness, he, it's, a, it's a curriculum. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. And if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fail and you will receive a warm welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And also from... Second Peter is sort of a forgotten letter often, but you can tell it's got some home runs in it, like the text we just uh, read. Uh, chapter 3, verse uh, uh, 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And you, and you could think about what we're trying to do uh, this evening very specifically, but generally as a church family is exactly that, to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. So we've um, talked a little bit last week about sharing uh, everyday rituals, prayers, and contemplative practices that best encourage us in the ways of love. And I think the one we probably remember is Laconia coming up with uh, dart uh, prayers, just short statements of what you're focused on. Uh, I suppose, um, Laconia will have to correct me on this, but I suppose it's often requests, but it could be Thanksgiving. It could, you know, whatever's on your heart, but not feeling the need to have an outpouring of words, but to simply get to the point you care about. That's yeah. it. That's that's essentially it. Um, because I, I think what sometimes keeps us from praying is the need to be articulate, the need to be eloquent. And, uh, you know, even scripture says, you know, the spirit knows what you're praying. You, Sometimes you don't have words. In fact, you could often say a lot of the time you don't have words, but just state what you are thinking. The spirit will take it over from there. That's that would seem to be what a dark prayer is talking about. He referenced a book which which I really want to uh, wasn't in my notes, wasn't planning to, but it's perfect for what we're talking about uh, in in this series. Set is celebration of discipline by Richard. Foster, and um, it came out <laughs> came out the year Debbie and I came to Stanford, <laughs> which would be 1978. <laughs> and um, but it, 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 the path to spiritual growth. And so let me get to the index here, Richard. It was it was a mind blowing to me. I mean, you look at it now and say why. Well, back then, all we were into was getting facts about God and Jesus, right? The, the notion of of, uh, of spiritual growth. Oh, well, okay, sure, if you can get that, but hey, I'm baptized. That covers it, right? And, and so spiritual growth. Oh, I'm supposed to do something after that? Well, this book has chapters on meditation, prayer, fasting, steady, Simplicity, solitude, submission, service, confession, worship, guidance, and celebration. Every one of those chapters is, is fantastic. So if you're personally looking, it's still, I think, I still think it holds its uh, uh, relevance uh, today. Um, 1978, oh. Greece was, was playing in the theaters. It was a very good day. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> the, uh, okay, it, uh, other thoughts? Uh, I'm prepared to move on to the next pages, but I don't mean to shut anybody out. Um, I, I, have, I have seen the scripture misuse a lot, um, huh. where they, like, you know, they turn it opposite that if you are being infective and unproductive in Christ, as in not evangelizing enough, not exactly. sharing about Jesus enough, then you are lacking in those qualities. Yeah. So I've seen it flip completely and mm -hmm. use in a very negative way than what it meant to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, yeah, so when you were reading that scripture, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, yeah, I remember this scripture. <laughs> 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 Not in a good way in the back. Mm -hmm. the but, um, but yeah, it's just to show you, like, you know, word of God, like, it, it can give you hope and at the same time it can really take away your joy you know absolutely it's it's it, what's it being used for yeah. and the sword <laughs> yeah 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 it's kind of cut it's a, it's a sword that's meant to cut yeah and yeah um so yeah, yeah even as i read it tonight i thought mm, that i know exactly what you're you're uh you're talking about um and you know how do you measure productivity well let's do it in numbers let's not do it in human beings but you know it's you know but so so yeah i mean 
the same text that can be used for growth and inspiration and uh, encouragement can also be used to abuse. And um, yeah, the part knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ was completely omitted. Yeah. Because that's what he's talking about. It's talking about knowledge, not productivity as in like, mm -hmm. you know, physical, like number productivity, like you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I have no problem with numbers. Yeah. But they'll come naturally. The, exactly. The numbers that are meant to come will come when you get the rest right. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what that's it. Mm -hmm. and that's what Jesus said. Right? Like, yeah. Love one another, and by this, you will people will know that you have the sense. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, in terms of, of also in terms of uh, prayer uh, requests, um, uh, you're heading to India. Yes, Monday. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so be remembering for all. Um, I think it's ten days, but he probably won't think to check in next week with us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I will have a cell service. <laughs> Anyway, we wish you well in that uh, in that trip. Okay, I'm going to share then. I'm on page three, and, and we did mention this first one last week, and I highly recommend it. Uh, prayers and affirmations that I start every morning with, and in every tight spot. Um, and I don't mean literally, literally. Um, Whenever I wake up first thing in the morning, this is what I do. Though that would be a very fine thing to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in the middle of the night when I'm not sleeping well, I do, you know, that's the tight spot I'm talking about. You know, I will, I will, uh, I will cite uh, uh, this, but I am talking about, a, I, I go on prayer walks almost every day. And this is the first, the first thing I, I say on the prayer walk, you know, let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. And every line from St. Teresa in the 16th century um, is just powerful. And in, 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 you have to give a little thought to it, you know, God never changes has been used in abusive ways too. I think of it in terms of God is always there. Whatever else is going on, whatever is falling apart, you know, whatever is passing away, God isn't one of them. God isn't passing away. God is there being the same loving, caring, all magnificent, all knowing God. God never changes. It's been used to say, well, whatever I think this text means from 2,000 years ago is exactly what it means now. You know, um, and that's a, an unfortunate meaning of God never changes. The, um, the good meaning is like God is love. God, yeah. That's never going to that's his essence. It's all, it's all, he's always going to be loving, he's always going to be caring. Um, and, and it's specifically you know, all maybe they all, uh, God, God is constant as that word's constant that would be perfect yeah God is constant um the um and and um and 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 and, and I like the I'm, you know I'm not, I'm not sure what it would have been in Spanish or Latin probably Latin for trees in the 16th century but the last line, God alone suffices. The, um, I mean, it has a sense of God only suffices. You know, nothing else suffices. Only God suffices. But it also has a sense that if all you had was God, you would have enough. God alone suffices. Um, and and there's a deep sense in which that is true, and everything starts coming back to you when you get connected to God in 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 that way. Um, so um, so I've found a lot of meaning. I mean, what happens for me it, it, where this prayer shows up is I'm finding myself, oh, that's not a pleasant thought. I'm. 
disturbed. I'm disturbed by that. I'm disturbed by that possibility. I'm disturbed by, oh, well, what would happen if such and such happened? I'm disturbed. And, and, uh, and, and then you remember, let nothing disturb you. And, and in every case, this is something. Don't let it disturb you. Whatever it is, don't let it disturb you. I mean, you know, you focus on it. You can see what maybe next steps might be. Don't let it disturb you. And certainly don't let it frighten you. Let nothing frighten you. You know, I, it, it, it's helped me enormously to, to when I'm dealing with uh, relative, you know, anxiety at any level, let nothing disturb you. And then all things are passing away. Guess what? That's true. It's 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 kind of like uh, it's kind of like uh, you know, there's no rules being broken when when things change. Uh, you know, and, and and you know that that is something that a that is something that I maybe didn't know when I was 45. It, it's something when you hit 60, when you when you hit 70. Yeah, all things are passing away. I mean, the cycles you've been through, the, the the losses you've taken, the people that were really, really important to you that are no longer a part of your life. Um, the or maybe not, maybe they're just not part of your everyday life. But, uh, but you know, I drive around town, and I would say when I was like thirty five years old, I thought all the stores in town. Were all, were all the stores in town that were supposed to be there. I mean, that they had been there always and they would always be there. And all, you know, my favorite, you know, Lord and Taylor's will be there. They have great sales and they will always be there with their great sales. <laughs> what happened to Lord and Taylor? You know, and, and, and but you just, you just look at in New York City's dealing with a major deal on this is, is you know stores changing, you know. So so a lot of the stores that that were my favorite stores in town are like gone. Well, that's just a fairly light example <laughs> of what I'm talking about. But guess what? A bunch of stores that look really great are coming in, you know. But all things are passing away. Also, this prayer occurred to me, um, and it it. It's based on Ephesians 3 and 19. Um, it's also based on something uh, that Augustine, uh, I believe, once said about, um, you know, we all have a God-shaped hole in our hearts and, uh, yeah. and only God can fill it. Um, so that's, that's what, so I was thinking about that on a prayer walk. And I came up with this, that there's no hole inside me that God does not fill. If I just remember, may my times of forgetting be less and less until they are no more. May I so empty myself that I may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And that gets me through rough patches. Uh, that there's no hole that, that God does not fill. The 23rd Psalm, which... Um, I find, you know, I find I do the 23rd Psalm probably pretty close to the King James Version. The, in memory work, the, the these and thous sort of come back in. And, um, and I seldom do it flawlessly, but, but I come pretty close every time. The, um, our father would fall in that category. Now, now here's the, What's the benefit of not just knowing this is a neat prayer, but actually having it in your memorized? I mean, you've got it. What, what's the benefit of that? And let, let me say, I was a child of an educational system when I came through, and I doubt it's changed a great deal at this point, which, which challenged rote, rote learning. And it, it taught you analysis and it taught you to think things through, but it but it minimized. I mean, I still remember for those of us who go back a ways in church, um, Wayne Adams, you know, I think could probably 
quote about a hundred pages of poems mm -hmm. just like that mm -hmm. and could still do it. Mm -hmm. And he, he he was of a different generation than mine educationally. And I was never taught that. And and so I come to my 60s and oh I see some value in doing this now. And um why? Oh, you Art? Go, right, ahead. go ahead, Debbie. Please go ahead. I was just asking these guys who come from a different generation and from a different country. But it's it, writing. Yeah. Over and over the things you want to remember mm -hmm. and memorize it. You do do that. Yeah. Okay. In the school, we used to do that a lot. Homework was like we used to like write the whole textbook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your parents used to also punish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's one thing. Effectively, mm -hmm. Art. I was going to say with regards to like the off father. I mean, it, it's 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 pretty common, and so you could pray with someone else by praying the off father because chances right. are they need it as well, and yeah. so all of a sudden you're on you're on the same page with that person. Yep, mm -hmm. that's a that's a big plus. The I found uh, the twenty third Psalm is is great when you walk into the room where someone has just died and the family is there our father would work too but but to but to call on a very familiar text that everybody knows um is, is um, it, it works the uh, yeah so yes the the um, it, it's great for the communion of saints that saints can actually be on the on the on the same page but to me the big value is i have it i don't have to find my bible and read it it's in my head the the um um i you know i don't have to um you, you know i don't have to carry a piece of paper around with me that has the prayer on it because the moment i'm going to need the prayer is going to be the moment I won't have that piece of paper with me, <laughs> you know, and that's what I've learned over, over, over time. That um, um, that it, it, and the and the other thing, uh, the other thing I learned was, you can do it, even if you're old, <laughs> you can do it. I mean, almost everything I have memorized in scripture. It, certainly these kinds of prayers it's the last four or five years you know these are not things i learned when i was 40 or 30 doesn't matter how old you are you, you know it's possible to pull these off the second thing i'd say but, but how how are they best memorized what did you guys it wrote. Yeah, write it out. Yeah. just write it out and write it out and write it out mm -hmm. okay well there's 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 two benefits of that because that's how I learn new songs. You know, right one thing to just, yeah, it's one thing or type it, right. you know, type right. it over and over uh, because, you know, where we store memory and where we really ingest it into our very beings are two are different places and different, you know, processes. Mm -hmm. And to uh, do something, some physical uh, uh, activity, whether it's writing or something, or while you're working, it it seems to imprint, mm -hmm. you know, much much deeper. Yeah, I would think that I'm not trying this, but just in terms of using all your senses, whether you're you reading it, and speaking it, mm -hmm. with writing, you're using something text textile, you're mm -hmm. using your muscles, so it's muscle memory. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. you can use of your senses, it's possible. Yeah, yes, Sense, and you know, just in terms of the. The psychology, the physiology of it all. Mm -hmm. so speaking like you know, just reading it three, four times, and then trying to look at uh, say it without looking. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know that's one of the ways we did for like short things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, short things like passage, one passage or something. You know, that's what I do. But I, but I don't try to do it all at once. I I do it two lines at once. Yeah, that's, you know, that's let better. nothing disturb you. Yeah. Let nothing frighten you. Mm -hmm. The first the first time I do it. That's all I'm trying to master. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm going to know that day. Mm -hmm. But 
and do something. Do basic though. Oh, so right. let's say you do first two lines today, tomorrow you do next two, but do you repeat all right. four tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. That's yes. the same way Bill yeah. and I yeah. also learned. Yeah. 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 When it, it, I was it, teaching younger kids, I often would if I try and get them to memorize a verse, I would use it. You have the other chalkboard, I get to do whiteboards, whatever. And I'd write it out and then I'd have them say it and then take away a, a word, erase the word, and then they have to say it and fill the word in, and erase another word and say it again, but build those words. So until you basically you've got all you got left is the of the and the you know, and the kind yeah. of thing. So acronyms never work for me. I don't know why. How people do acronyms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, different things will work for different people, but 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 I found you could you could you could put a lot of memory into your mind two lines at a time. I'm only going to add two lines today. But I'm going to check, you know, I've been, you know, this is my fourth day. So I'm going to check on the first six lines, you know, and, you know, I'm stumbling a little bit. Well, maybe I'll repeat those two a couple of times. And then I add lines seven and eight. And um, and it, it comes together. Um, it also helps to sing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, there's a reason the we we learn the books of the bible by song mm -hmm. you know and that's that's still uh that's still how that to, even today that's how i get through the minor prophets <laughs> is you, yeah. you have to, you have to you know i mean where, where is joe i don't know <laughs> i oh really? hosea okay oh it's right after yeah hosea. run the tape right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, on page four, other recommendations, and and um, um, Sam, I I didn't I just wanted to add this one because I I do it a lot, but the Susape from Ignatius is a really good one to memorize too. Which one? Susape. I think, I think I'm saying it right. Lord, take everything, all my liberty my uh, memory, my understanding, all my will, everything I have and call my own. S send me uh, send me the source sometime. Sure. That, that, that sounds That's great. A good one, though, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's lots of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're, yeah, there they're are definitely uh, lots of them. I think Robert last week uh, uh, mm -hmm. cited one from St. Francis. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in in Saint Francis alone would have two or three of them that I I don't I haven't memorized those ones, but I do know they'd be worthy of of uh, of, of memorizing. Okay, um, something called Ignatian contemplation. Uh, to me, one of the great discoveries in the last few years is this. Uh, it's very scripture based. It comes from Ignatius of Loyola, 16th century, otherwise known as the founder of the Jesuits, Spanish. Uh, and he comes up with something uh, meditating on an episode from the life of Jesus. Meditating on an episode from the life of Jesus, taking a story by visualizing the context and setting, put it in a physical setting, consider its context and involve all your senses, relive the story in your mind. And, um, and, um, and what he did was he, he came up with a way of understanding scriptures that we discovered about 30 years ago. And, and he discovered 500 years ago the uh which is which is just brilliant visualize the context like the annunciation uh, gabriel appears to uh to mary and you picture who she is a young probably peasant woman in nazareth uh, i pictured at night not necessarily but it, it makes sense and she says you have found favor with god uh, you will have a son, his name will be great, his name will be Jesus, he will save his people from their sins. And she says, well, how can that be? 
and you're picturing this now. You're you're picturing the room in which it happens. Our our uh, Vizio Divina help. That was the first uh, painting that uh, uh, that we that we had. Um, but she says, "How can this be?" And he says, "The angel says, well, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Nothing is impossible with God." And um, and so you remember just basically that part of the story, but you you picture it. And 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 when you there are times when you when you picture it so much that it's like you enter the story, and you're right there. And when that happens, you may just experience the presence of God or the spirit of God in the way you never had before. Sometimes when I relive these stories, I get a high that no drugs ever did. We've talked about that, right? Bet. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's, that's, what I, that's what I'm talking about is that, is that process. Sure. The, you know, the nativity. I, I picture Mary and Joseph coming to... Um, uh, to Bethlehem for registration of some kind. Uh, other people are there. There's no room in the inn. And so the Lord of creation is going to be born in an animal feed trough out back. Stable, a cave, pictured however you want to. The child is born. The heavens break open with angelic choirs. And mm -hmm. one great angel proclaims good news of great joy that's for all the people. And, but you picture, I'm just running almost through the words of it, but when I'm, Jane. Yeah, I find music is also a powerful, powerful way. And, and I don't know, but you're speaking about uh, the incarnation story. And that particular one, mostly the texts out of Matthew, were set to music and done in a very modest but very powerful little stage production many, many, many decades ago. Uh, some of you have heard me mention this before by a guy named Al Clarmines at Judson Church. It was kind of their annual Sunday school pageant. But it was, and I still, I mean, after not turning that on, I can put that music on and I can yeah. sing, albeit scratchy and cranky, and I'm glad no one's around, but every <laughs> word of the story, every word of the story and the images that go with it really just, just kind of pour back into my mind and my mouth and it's all just right there. I don't have to I don't have to reach or grasp at all. Uh, and as you were speaking about it and as you were reading some of those texts, it was right there again. Um, yeah. And I think I think music and and theater, the you know, this was not and some costumes, but there was not much. Yeah. <laughs> Such a powerful way. And I think the same can be said of a lot of our hymns. You know, I'm an I'm an old church educator, and we used to say that, you know, a huge percentage, 80, 90, 95 percent of our theology for most of us it comes not from the texts of the Bible, except as they are embedded in the hymns. We get our theology from our hymns. Um, and I, I think that is absolutely true. Most of us, most of our theology and most of what we think about God and Jesus and the incarnation and the Christian world, We're getting mainly what she's saying, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you froze a few times, but I think we were getting 
most of what you were saying. Oh, well, I can probably say it all again if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have absolute confidence in you. <laughs> the, the, but, but, but I mean, an example of that would be, you know, the power of Handel's Messiah. Yes. I mean, there are just pieces in there that, that you know, you can, I mean, you, <clears throat> you feel God. Uh, yep. And, and uh, so, so, yes. There are numbers of ways. I think it's a shame the text itself doesn't do it for us. I think Jane's mm -hmm. absolutely right. The that that for fortunately music does, but uh, but I'd like to think both of them would would be. I, I think for me at least, there are a handful of texts that yeah. do, but it's a it's it's a handful, and I'll admit it. And it's there are many more. Um, musical lyrics that do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Say for me as well, like uh, here I am, Lord, the hymn. Yeah. Lord, uh, Prophet Isaiah. That's also one of the best can You can say it. We sang it last night. Yeah. <laughs> and before that. And before that. Yeah. And it yeah completely but... fills out the space. So it's mm -hmm. like completely different when like the music is involved. Mm -hmm. Rather than also like uh, singing alone or like if you're listening to a song on YouTube mm -hmm. and when you hear in the church, it's mm -hmm. completely different mm -hmm. with all the people and the choir singing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've listened to Eddie mm -hmm. sing that song. He once recorded, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As in the... <laughs> well, John puts out um, music therapy most mornings. Is that the right phrase? Music therapy, yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, finds beautiful recordings of uh, of what I what I'd often say is what John does is you know there it's contemporary music but it all to me in most cases it has a spiritual application uh, and uh, and some of them have been um, you know some of them have got me through the day so uh, yes music. The um, but what I would say is if another way of working at this is uh, is um, Ignatian contemplation and uh, in his book the spiritual exercises of Saint Ignatius is still worth reading now it's about ninety pages and it, it tells you all the you know you you'd think it was written fifty years ago instead of five hundred years ago. I mean, it, it's it's uh, it's it's like, well, how did you come up with that? And then it was forgotten for, for another few centuries. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm supposing the Jesuits, when they had their act in order, uh, hadn't forgotten it, but it didn't become part of uh, of, uh, of uh, popular uh, devotion. Okay, I'm just mentioning some authors who are rich in loving insight. Uh, for me. Yeah, throw in other names, but uh, but but uh, Thomas Merton and Henri Nouwen um, are near the top of my list. Anthony DeMello, um, but then I'm throwing one in that 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 would probably surprise um, some people. I would think people who generally know me would not be surprised, but would be Rumi who happens to be a Persian uh, Muslim from the 13th century. And, uh, and he's written numbers of books and uh, I've read as many as I can find. He's, many, many people know about him. Uh, the, and, and he's been translated by many people, but I'm recommending the translations by Coleman Barks. Uh, if you're reading him, uh, but I'm just turning, I'm looking at a book called The Essential Rumi Translations by Coleman Barks, and you, and okay, so, so this is a, um, a Sufi Muslim mystic. Everyone in America should know what a Sufi is, and I doubt more than 7% do, and, um, but the Islam is is broken into Sunni and uh, Shia and um, 
and maybe some other groups, but it's mainly that. But it's but there are also Sufis who are neither Sunni or Shia, and um, and 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 they're the um, they're the poets. They're the mystics of love. And 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 Rumi didn't originate it, but it became the most famous of of those poets of love. And um, so, for instance, in terms of current events, uh, you will sometimes hear about um, uh, radical Islamists destroyed a mosque in Pakistan, right? You've heard that kind of story happens. The the uh, you now why are radical Islamists destroying mosques in Pakistan? Because they're Sufi. That's why they're being destroyed. Radical Islamists do not want the, the message of Islamic love getting out. And and so when you, when you hear a mosque being destroyed in 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 the uh, in the Middle East and particularly in Pakistan, where where I've seen it most often. So, so when that happens, you're dealing with Sufis. But but Rumi is just a delight to read. It, it, um, the the uh, and, and it's said that when he died, uh, he, let's see, he was in Konya. He'd escaped from Persia and and uh, like Genghis Khan and other people coming through had driven him toward Turkey, and he was in Konya. Um, uh, uh, Turkey, and um, and when he died, this is in the 13th century. There were many, many Christians, Muslims, and Jews attended the funeral. Okay, what else is happening in the 13th century? The Crusades. <clears throat> the Crusades are happening. Hatred, violence between religions. Meanwhile, up in Konya. Uh, Turkey, Rumi is dying, and enough Jews, Christians, and Muslims have recognized the power of the men that they're all there at his funeral. The, the, one of the, um, I, I would encourage you if you're, if you think you're given to this kind of reading, to to consider Rumi. The the uh, one of the interesting things I found is is uh, as I was reading him. And uh, is Jesus comes up in his poetry more often than Muhammad does. Now he he dies Muslim, Sufi Muslim. Uh, but but when he's talking about love, Jesus is going to show up in his things a lot. Okay, the first two pages I'm looking at, a couple of lines from Rumi. My soul is from elsewhere. <clears throat> I'm sure of that, and I intend to get there. <laughs> My soul is from elsewhere. I'm sure of that, and I intend to end up there. A few lines later, whoever brought me here will have to take me home. Yeah. You get, get the power of the of, of of the man open open your hands open your hands if you want to be held the um, quit acting like a wolf and feel the shepherd's love filling you and here's here's the i'm just looking at a, a page opening in rumi um, why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open Why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? So I mean, there's great readings out there too. That 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 and 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 for me, when I find a sense of the divine in other world systems, I was raised to be threatened by that. I delight in it now. Why would I delight in it? Because it shows God shines everywhere. 
It affirms God. It doesn't undermine God. There's like divine resonations. It's all over the place. The image of God is everywhere. And so when I find lines like this in a Muslim writer, I'd like, wow, fantastic. God is everywhere. God shines through. And and uh, but I wasn't raised that way. I was raised to, you know, in an adversarial modes. Wrong. I mean, the goodness shines wherever the goodness shines, wherever the light shines, wherever the love shines is wonderful. What whatever tradition it uh, uh, it comes from. So I throw Rumi in in there. A few books um, that are rich in loving insight. A yeah. great. Oh, why are you saying all of well, this? Is this what he says? He's, yeah. There's a, oh, what? Is this what he says? He, um, these authors, why did you pick out those particular ones? Uh, because, because, because I find that they come back to the theme of love over and over again. If I'm trying to learn the ways of love, Thomas Merton is going to be great at showing me that. Henri Nouwen is going to be great at showing me that. Rumi is going to be great at showing me that. 50 others, a thousand others could do it. Uh, you know, okay. I'm, I'm just showing you, if you haven't thought of, of looking at the readings of some people, here are some people that have been helpful to me, but they're not, they're not necessarily even the best. And I mean, at any point here in, in, in this class, Jane or, or whatever, um, um, you can jump in with, well, the writer that really has helped me, because they're all, there's dozens of them. We all know that, right? The, uh, but I'm just throwing a few names out that where I, where I started noticing, wow, this is spectacular. Mm. The, and, and, you know, if I thought about it, I'd come up with another 20. I see. The, okay, uh, a book by uh, uh, J. Philip Newell, well, it's written there. Celtic Prayers for My Ona. Um, about 20 years ago, I discovered wow. this. Iona is this great monastery on the western edge of Scotland, on an island off the coast, an island off an island off the coast. And it's it, it's 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 historically very interesting in terms of, of Christian missions back in the sixth century AD. Uh, but now it's it's kind of an interfaith community out there, and J. Philip Newell's been at the heart of it, emphasizes prayer, and it comes up. Th this is a book of daily prayer with prayers in the morning prayer and prayers in the evening. And, and uh, just to give you an example of, of Monday morning, and he's saying every week, you, and I had this prayer memorized once, but I don't have it sharp anymore, but it wouldn't be hard to get it back and it's worth getting back. But the morning prayer for Monday was, thanks be to you, O God, that I have risen this day to the rising of this life itself. May it be a day of blessing, O God, of every gift, a day of new beginnings given. Help me to avoid every sin and the source of every sin to forsake. And as the mist scatters from the crest of the hills, may each ill haze clear from my soul, O oh God. Let me run. Thanks be to you, O oh God, that I have risen this day to the rising of this life itself. May it be a day of blessing, O oh God, of every gift, a day of new beginnings given. Help me to avoid every sin and the source of every sin to forsake. See his last four lines. And as the mist scatters from the crest of the hills, may each ill haze clear from my soul, O oh God. I don't know about you, but I have ill hazes sometimes. You know, and, and that's what it is. It's not, it's not a it's not a thumping anxiety. It, it's not, you know, it's not a solid frustration. It's just an ill haze. Mm -hmm. You know, and as the mist, you know, rise from the scatters from the crest of the hills, may each ill haze clear from my soul, O oh God. That's a prayer worth having. I mean, to have it in your mind and when I'm in the line somewhere, um, 
you know, I would use it for way more than Monday uh, mornings. Um, a great book, a great writer is James K.A. Smith. You are what you love, the spiritual power of habit in terms of what we're doing in these units here. Um, the, um, um, uh, he's great. Um, it, here's, here's a sub, it's not really a subtitle to the book, but it's a, it's a theme to the book. You are what you love, but you might not love what you think. Yeah, that's the, the catch in there. You might not love what you think you love. You know, um, you might be loving something else and that's why you're screwed up. You know, um, you are what you love, but you might not love what you think. And then a set of books that, that, that Debbie called my attention to a couple of years ago for my birthday, by Douglas Kane and Kelby, Every Moment Holy. And it just has marvelous prayers. Books of prayers. This is the point here. This is a good one. This isn't the only one. There might be a hundred better for all, but this is a really, really good one. And and uh, But to, to have a few books of devotional uh, uh, prayer around. Okay, um, let me take two more minutes we we're gonna we're gonna spend a little time next week finishing up some of this, but everyone got this in their mailing today. But the people who are are here tonight take take a copy of this, and uh, because what I what I would like, well, I'm getting to the point here where I want to um, um, you know, if someone would give me a sheet path I would theory thank you the the um, this was the first sheet given out when we started these studies it's worth reading but it's pages three and four that I'm calling your attention to uh, whether you're online or in person, Pull that sheet off of the, to the morning mailing or uh, handing out hard copies here. The case studies, the kinds of things we could be looking at, uh, 10 of them of which we have looked at. But the, and, and help me a little bit here, take 15 minutes sometime this evening, Sunday afternoon, whatever, and feel free to get back to me with what are your challenges in being a more loving person? What, what you know, what are the obstacles? What are the opportunities? What, and, and, and I've come up, I came up with two pages of them that, that occurred to me, but, but I'm not really saying, okay, and pick the best of these. I'm giving you examples of the kinds of things it could be. I think Art once gave me one from uh, 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 from near the beginning of the uh, of the class when he said, you know, how, how to act in loving ways when you feel you're being manipulated. Well, that's a great, that's a great example. That's a life experience and it gets kind of tough loving when you feel you're being manipulated. And, and and that's not on this sheet. And, and so what I'm saying is use these examples. If, if two, one or two or three of them really like jump out at you and say, yeah, let's cover that soon. Let me know what those two or three are. But the main thing is to use this as examples of, yeah, but my life struggle is with this. Oh, I want to know that. And, you know, I mean, I think all of these are worth looking at, but I'm most, uh, I'm most interested in working with things which are challenges some of us may be facing right now. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.